Time and time again, we've seen famed astrophysicist and TV personality Neil deGrasse Tyson burst our bubbles. With his quips and many I told you so moments on Twitter, he's quickly becoming the Grinch of the internet. But you often can't help but agree with what he's saying. After all, he's a scientist, so he knows what he's talking about. In this video, we'll go over another truth bomb Tyson just exploded over our heads. Starting with the good news that he's about to ruin. In the recent episode of Pop Mechanics Explains the Universe, the Cosmo Star discussed the endless cycle that academics find themselves in when they enter the publishing world. But that led to another important observation that Tyson had made about the amount of research that's happening in today's world. While he was completing his postdoc at Princeton University in 1995, Tyson would head to the library quite a lot, and in the library, you tend to get distracted, of course. Tyson's attention went towards a particular row of bookshelves that was only filled with editions of just one journal, the Astrophysical Journal. By looking at this wall of journals, he wondered what the doubling time of these research publications was. If you don't know what doubling time is, it's a mathematical term that's used for the time taken for something to double. This time can be measured in seconds, days, months, and even years. Quite self-explanatory. So Neil deGrasse Tyson over here was looking for the doubling time of all the new research done in his field, which is astrophysics. How did he do that? Well, he simply looked at the bookshelf and divided it into two halves. Half of the research published before that midpoint would equal half of the research after that, and the midpoint was 1980. From there, he kept having the shelves and found a pattern over 15 years. He realized that he was living in a century that was producing as much research as it did in the entire history of the journal. Moving on to what this means for the human race. Okay, cool. So scientists are publishing more stuff. Hooray! What does this have to do with us? Well, to put everything into perspective, with that much research being published, that must mean that the human race is making more progress and technological advancement than it ever has. Tyson didn't just stick to astrophysics. He looked at the doubling time of other scientific fields like medicine and engineering as well. And he found out that the doubling time for all those fields was roughly similar. So humans are excelling in every field faster than they've ever done before. That's what we got out of that, right? In his book, Starry Messenger, Cosmic Perspectives on Civilizations, he referred to this rapid advancement as exponential growth. For the non-math nerds out there, it simply means something that's growing way more than its nature. In this case, research is being produced and published way more than it previously was. So all in all, that sounds fantastic. We're getting more knowledge about the world around us. The human race is advancing at a speed that's never been achieved before. One other way he elaborates on this exponential growth thing is by counting the number of patents given in the 21st century. Just between the years 2010 and 2020, the number of patents was way higher than the number of patents between 1960 and 2000. So that means we're living in what Neil calls special times. But before we could even take a breath and marvel at what he said, Neil being Neil tears that fantasy apart, following up with a cruel awakening. Neil's gotcha moment here is, hey, we're not living in special times. Well, what happened to that exponential growth? Weren't humans churning out more research than ever? Well, not quite. You see, Neil claims that our human minds are too tiny to wrap our heads around such exponential concepts like these. Let's bring back those 15 years. In that 15 year period, if you step into it at any any point, you'd feel that you're living in special times. But what's really happening is that the amount of new knowledge we're getting is actually based on what was discovered in the previous 15-year period. So basically, every 15 years, we start from scratch and have to improve on what we know to lead to more discoveries, which are then used by others in the next 15-year period. Phew, that made your head spin, right? To better understand, Neil gives us the example of Einstein's theory of relativity. This was a fresh starting point that ultimately led to the discovery of GPS navigation. Without that initial research done by Einstein, Uber drivers might still be using paper maps. So to recap, research is simply used to make way for more research, and we're not living in special times. Moving on to the endless publishing cycle. Apart from simple human curiosity, Tyson explains that other factors are leading to this sudden growth in research material. It's known as the publishing or perished culture. New graduates have to get their work published in scientific journals to stand out, and scientists have to publish new work that's better than their last in order to get more funding for their current research. And what ends up happening is that these researchers then end up cutting up their research into many different parts that they can keep publishing. So all of that research that's coming up is really just part of the same thing. Apart from that, there are also other factors like publishing biases and budget pressures. So all of this ruins the integrity of the research. This means most of the scientific research is just not reliable. Are we reaching our true potential as humans or are we just caught in a race to keep 
keep putting out more stuff in the universe? Well, we'll leave you to think about that. Now moving on to other news. First up, a discovery of super Earths and super Mercuries. Speaking of newly published research, researcher Susanna Barros and her team recently published their findings in the Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal. With the help of the Espresso Spectrograph, they found three super Earths and two rare super Mercuries. They were studying a star system called HD 23472, and they landed upon these planets sharing some similarities with the Earth that we know and love and Mercury. The super Mercuries were very rare though. Mercury is known to have a larger core and a smaller mantle than the other planets in our solar system, and these super Mercuries had similar properties. This is an exciting discovery because there are two of those in this star system. What giant impact caused not one but two super Mercuries to be formed is a question that scientists are really eager to answer. Following up with the mystery behind fast radio bursts. Fast radio bursts are basically a phenomenon that scientists have been unable to figure out. These were discovered quite recently, like 15 years ago, so it's not surprising that we don't know much about them. All we know is that they are extremely strong radio waves that last maybe a fraction of a millisecond, but they end up producing more energy than the sun does in a year. But no one has been able to pinpoint its source. A group of scientists recently gathered to study the 1900 radio bursts that emerged from an outside galaxy, and its name is too long for this video, so we'll spare you the details, but what they found was quite mysterious. These emissions were the most active ones in recent history, as they kept occurring for 82 hours over the course of 54 days. Researchers found out that the source of the FBRs has been there for a long time, but it only got active for those 54 days. What triggered that activity? Well, they can only guess. They believe that it came from a binary system about 8,480 light years away and was produced by the changing magnetic fields of a magnetar, but that hasn't been proven yet. And finally, we found another Earth. Well, not quite, but it might be able to support life. The only drawback is that it's about 100 light years away. Researchers from the University of Birmingham believes that this planet exists in what's known as a habitable zone. A habitable zone is space around a star that might have conditions needed for liquid water to be on the surface. And from all of the exoplanets we've studied so far, this one is the most likely to support life. This planet is about 40% bigger than our Earth. Its orbit around a cold star lasts 8.5 days, and what's different about this planet is that its surface is rocky, which is unlike other exoplanets that have been discovered before. And even though it's close to the sun, its sun's temperature is half the temperature that our sun has. So yeah, it looks like we're getting another Earth. But before you start celebrating, it's still unsure if it has other properties that are required for life to exist. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Neil deGrasse Tyson's analysis of the doubling time. Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.